I'd get the question, hey, what do you want to be when you grow up? And it was an NHL hockey player. That's all I wanted to do. I remember just the anticipation. I love to compete. I love the speed of it. I love to score. Grew up in Peterborough, Ontario. Peterborough was a hockey town, so it was filled with hockey rinks. Um, balancing that with school and church and family. You know, hockey is stats related, performance based, and that kind of, I think, carried over as a kid into just trying to be a good kid. At six years old, I was about to go to school and I asked my mom if I could ask the Lord into my heart. And I still remember where and on my knees and prayed with my mom. At six, it's, I don't know if you really understand everything. You definitely don't, but it's definitely a start. I left home at 17. I was drafted into the Ontario Hockey League, so I went away at 17 and left family and friends and security of your know, kind of home church. And um, I was playing with 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 year olds. And I, uh, I struggled. I was trying too much to maybe fit in and I was focusing for so long on what I can't do. I can't swear, I can't drink, can't have sex, can't do all these things. Meanwhile, inside, I'm not, I'm not focusing on that relationship. It was hockey took over. At 19, I get to the, I make it to the NHL. I'm making a great salary. Um, it's, I made it. Made my childhood dream and Everything was great on the exterior, the interior. Not good at all. Yeah, I remember signing my first contract. I was 19 years old. Just kind of a little bit unbelievable. You know, that should have been, that's every kid's dream is to sign a contract and I remember you know, going out that night to a bar, getting drunk, making bad decision, and waking up the next morning feeling like the worst piece of crap that I, I could ever you know, feel like. There's a lot of inside feelings of a lot of different things. I was letting people down, I was letting God down, trying to hide trying to pretend like everything was great. Still go to church, but maybe be hung over. Not really into it, but just putting up a kind of a facade. When I did a Bible study with my cousin, who I was living with at the time at the age of about 22, I get to a scripture. And it's Luke 9, 23 to 25. And it says, if you want to be a follower of me, you have to put aside your own selfish desires, shoulder your cross daily and follow me. If you try to keep your life for yourself, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find true life. What do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul in the process? Remember that scripture just kind of hit me and that was for me. because I'd reached my dreams. And I had money and everything he thought was cool and just wasn't working and I knew what the answer, but I hadn't been looking for it in the right places. And through a process of just praying and getting in the word with my cousin, uh, my life was changed, and for the first time, I remember thinking, "Man, this is this is really uh, real." It wasn't because of my parents. It wasn't because I was supposed to be 
in church, but it became real to me and didn't happen overnight, but slowly God changed me on the inside and I started to not worry about the don'ts, but just focus on just pursuing him. And slowly God started to just bring up stuff, started to confess things in my life that I wasn't proud of. And slowly God just kind of released that. It wasn't religion anymore. It was a real relationship. That was awesome. Game day, I still get goosebumps. Thankful to be able to do what I love to do. I fail. Definitely, I'm on the back end of my career. I'm a guy that's kind of not very patient at times, and I'm a slow healer. But I finally figured out that it wasn't just about performing. It's just accepting his love. In spite of our failures and our mistakes, that love of the Father is unconditional. And that's a pretty good feeling to, to know that how much he loves me. My name is Mike Fisher, and I am second.